I would like to proudly present to you Anko Scholte ter Horst. Please give it up for Anko Scholte ter Horst. He's the talk will be in English, but there's a lot of history and facts and um, yeah, sp a specific Dutch hacker culture maybe. So you might not understand all the references, but I think it's very important to listen to this story and I think it's history in the making, but that's my personal opinion. So please give it up for Anke Scholte ter Horst. First, get the English version of the slides, which I uh, quickly make. Thank you all for uh, being here and uh, thank you for uh, letting me, uh, let me doing a little talk here. Um, uh, the purpose of the talk is a little history indeed, as uh, just mentioned, and then a little look into the future. Um, so, um, I know you have all been having dinner, so you might already be a bit tired, so I will try to make it a bit of uh, not too tiring talk, I hope. First, a little history lesson. Who remembers this site? Yeah? yeah? This is a part of a very old uh, site of Access for All, and Access for All was the, uh, one of the first ISPs in the Netherlands. Uh, in 1993, Hectic, maybe yeah. still some people still remember Hectic here, uh, starts to uh, found the first ISP in the Netherlands. And the goal was to have 500 subscribers in 12 months. Um, that was a success because they had 500 subscribers in one day. The fun part of that is that if we look at this is history and there is a sort of repeating uh, uh, thing here, which I'll come back to later. Um, there were four founders uh, mentioned here, and, uh, but the company was already taken over by KPN, the Dutch telecom provider, uh, in 1998. So that's already the, and the, the, the idea was that um, that was the period that broadband came into uh, action into the Netherlands. And uh, Access for All needed a strong partner to co get into that market, in the broadband market, and KPN was looking for uh, internet providers to get more knowledge about internet, and they just bought everything what was something with the internet, as well, Access for All. And there was an expansion with Access for All, and important to mention is that Although KPN bought it, it was still an independent company. It was separate, it was not integrated, everything was complete separate. And in 2004, 2005 and 2006, other ISPs and others were taken over by Access for All. Uh, are still people here that ever were a member of HCCNet? Yes, yeah, good, 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 good. But then, January 10, 2019, Maximo Ibarra, the CEO of uh, KPN, um, came into the news with his one brand strategy. And that meant everything would become KPN. Everything would be integrated. Everybody would, everything would be one company. Which in itself, if you think about it, if you have a lot of brands going to a one brand strategy, is not even a bad idea. It can cut costs, it can be more efficient. I, I can imagine that it's a good idea. But the mistake KPN made is that thinking in the board that Access for All is a brand. Yes, it, it's a brand, but it's more than a brand. It is a company with a vision and, and ideas, and there is a community behind it, and people uh, are going there for a reason. And they are not going to KPN because that's not the company they believe in. That was the mistake. So, time for action. So in January uh, 2019, uh, we started preparing some action. And that means that the first contact we had with a KPN was already on the 30, uh, 32nd of, uh, yeah, 37, no, 23rd, <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, 20, yeah. Um, uh, January uh, with the board. And the discussion was uh, uh, that we tried to explain, guys, this is a bad idea. Don't do this, uh, hey, there's a community, and, and leave it as it is, integrate the other brands, whatever, but leave this behind. 
better even don't integrate but r enforce the company again because the last couple of five ten years you have been eating up of access for all autonomy already for 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 years so put it back in its power well it was a totally a waste of time that discussion because they didn't land um so two days later uh, kpn and then came into the news what Ibarra said on the 10th was real. We are going to integrate. Access for all will disappear as the other brands. So to the, that was also the kickoff to really found an action group. An action group, Access for all moet blijven, Access for all will stay. And it was in Amsterdam, in Waag, and there it was the kickoff, the real kickoff of the action group. And then, time for action. So, um, in February, the first ideas became, because there was a talk about, uh, hey, don't let x disappear into KPN, and we, 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 we felt it's, it's, KPN does not see that what we are saying. So we started having a sort of brainwave from, what if x really disappears? That means that we don't have a provider in the Netherlands anymore that really stands for not only giving internet connections, but also believes in good security, privacy, will fight for uh, digital rights and all those things. So there is something gone in the market. So would it be possible to found a new provider that fills that gap? So there is also a place where people and employees can go to. And in February, I, um, the, the action group asked me, Anko, can you calculate if that's possible? So I start calculating. And I can tell you, I was calculating, calculating, and the first thing that I thought is, not going to happen ever. Uh-uh. You have this too much money in a difficult market. It's not going to fly. <sighs> Waste of time. Uh, so, also continuing with action. Uh, so, um, in the end of March, we had a great little action here. Um, this is the Rijksmuseum. And in the Rijksmuseum was a meeting of the upper management of KPN. And they all came with their husbands and wives, uh, walking to a nice dinner, but they had to walk uh, alongside of this <laughs> and get a, a, not only the signs, but also a little uh, leaflet uh, so the, the whole uh, management uh, of KPN was uh, informed about our ideas and plans. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so more action, more and more action. <laughs> um, on the 10th of April, uh, two things happened. Um, they said because the uh, OR, the uh, on the naming What's a good English word for on the naming by the way? Works Council, very good. The Works Council start coming with alternatives, and KPN said, okay, we'll look into it, a bit vague. And at the 10th of April, there was a uh, shareholder meeting in Rotterdam, and that was fun. Um, I don't know, uh, were there people there from this, uh, from this audience? No? Okay, what we did, we asked customers of Access for All, come to the meeting. And for that, you have to do two things. You have to register, and to register, you have to buy shares in KPN. So all these people, about 40 people, bought shares, registered, and we went there. And also, KPN started acting a bit nervous. They said, oh, God, all these people with one share coming. What is this going on? <laughs> <laughs> Panic attack. Uh, maybe they start rioting or something. But that's actually not what we did. What we did is we made a list of uh, questions which were uh, challenging questions for the board to answer why, and to, to challenge the idea why this is a, a, a good idea and to say this is a very bad idea. So in that uh, shareholder meeting, there was a, quite a, some uh, uh, on, on the agenda, there were quite a lot of uh, topics, but the whole shareholder meeting went only on two topics, access for all and the bonus uh, for the CEO. 
that was the only thing that was discussed and not in favor of what the proposals were. And um, Maximo Ibarra, the CEO, then said repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly in that meeting, we will integrate access for all, but nothing will change uh, and nothing means nothing. And he didn't say that once, twice, or th I think tenfold. A promise he could never make because it's not possible to not change anything if you change your whole infrastructure. Um, but, uh, and also fun part there was, uh, this is really funny, uh, we made two uh, Toegangspoortjes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and a yellow one and a green one. <laughs> and, and the green one, uh, the yellow one had uh, um, profit without bonuses, and the green one had bonuses without profit. And everybody that came, because it was on the public space in front of the office, and everybody that came to that door uh, could choose which gate they would take. Uh, and we kept track of which gate people took. The yellow one had 100% score, can I can tell you. So it was quite a success. It was funny. But the, the good outcome of that meeting was that uh, I was approached by Ibarra after the meeting, and he said, OK, uh, we don't understand each other. Let's talk. So we decided to schedule a meeting and talk. And that talk was on the, and I have to say, 24th. Uh, 24th. And in the talk, there was the whole uh, board of KPN present, and myself and Kirsten Fidel. And Kirsten Fidel was the, the woman that started uh, the petition in the beginning, which is, was signed or at that time already for 40-something thousand times. Um, so in that meeting, we went in and we thought, okay, this is going to be uh, a waste of time, but let's try because KPN, the only thing they're going to are uh, doing is where they will tell us that it's really a good plan and nothing will change and nothing means nothing and we will repeat the same thing. But what actually happened is we quite got into a very good discussion with Maximo Ibarra. He really tried to understand what our points were. He disagreed, but he tried. There was a really uh, discussion. And in that meeting, we uh, suggested the following idea, is why don't you sell access for all? Because if you sell access for all, you have a couple of uh, uh, positive sides. We generated a lot of media attention, which was not in favor of KPN. You are rid of us. No more media attention to KPN. The second thing that is good for you is that the uh, Works Council is also trying to do uh, lots of things and, and maybe even going to court. Problem solved. Third positive side, you get a lot of money. And not only a lot of money, but also a long-term contract for the use on the networks. And Ibarra said, well, something we actually never considered selling it. But this is something we have to discuss internally, and let's get another meeting, and then we come back and see if that's an option. So on um, the 6th of June, we had a second meeting. And um, is it this, uh, no, uh, yeah, 3rd of June. Uh, 6th of June, 3rd of June, we had the second meeting. And uh, then they said, we're not going to sell uh, access for all, so we're not putting a sign in the garden for sale. But if you, as an action group, come with a good offer or with an investor you work with, with a good offer that is uh, commercially right and with a long-term contract on the networks, we consider. It's good. It's actually not a bad plan. We go for it. Now. The fun part was <laughs> that we anticipated a little. That means we've been asking around, are there even investors in the Netherlands that are willing to pay for 100% uh, shares of Access for All? And yes, there were. Actually, there were lots. Uh, founding a 
investor that was willing to pay a considerable amount of money for access for all, and we're talking hundreds of millions here, took us a week. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we had one first, and, this, and we knew ah, this is not going to be a good one because KPN won't like this investor because they're also investing in mobile networks and maybe competing with KPN is maybe not a good idea. But the other one was completely okay, and we knew that it was an investor that also did a lot of work with, with KPN before, so they knew each other, had a lot of comfort, so discussion started. Now, the fun part. We said, okay, KPN, we need to make an offer. And to make an offer, you have to do, have something about figures, profits, uh, revenues. Um, we knew already all those figures, unofficially. But now we needed them officially. Uh, that took KPN to come up with those figures considerable amount of weeks because it was a difficult question, apparently. And uh, in that process, we were preparing that offer and waiting for the right figures, but then something very weird happened. Um, the 25th of June, Ibarra says, I'm going. I'm going back to Italy. Um, he got an offer from Sky Italia. Uh, it was, was a good offer, I believe. I think he went from a salary of 1 million euros per year to 8 million or something. It was considerably more money. <laughs> Um, but it was a shock to us as well, because, yeah, we were still discussing, so now what? Uh, 1st of August, the Cover Council says to KPN, okay, we really want to listen to, you, to our plans, and we, 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 if you don't listen to our, our negative advice, we will go to court. And on 6th of August, we placed that offer. But the problem was with that offer, it's, it was there, and it was, um, uh, but who is now deciding? There's no CEO officially. So, and then there came a new CEO uh, from Belgium, of our Leroy, but she went away again because she sold some shares. Uh, and then it was very weird, sort of soap uh, ser series there. And um, um, the. The biggest uh, point is, was the 19th, the 19th of September. That was a key date. I, was got, I got a call uh, before the opening of the uh, stock exchange, 8.30 in the morning, from Wouter Stammeyer, that's the chief strategy officer of uh, KPM. And he said, we're going to do two things. Firstly, the negative advice from the work council, what we got, we ignore completely. And if they want to sue us, they sue us, we'll win. And the second announcement was the offer you made, although it's a bloody good offer, we are not going to take it. We will integrate access for all, definitely. This is a quite strong message, but very clear. Very clear. And for us, it was, okay, as the action group said, oh, well, okay, we had this plan B, uh, what if it disappears? Can we then do another uh, uh, new ISP in the Netherlands? And we looked back at that plan at that date. Because what happened is, in the months before, as you, I told you, the first time I made this business case, I thought, <laughs> no, 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 it's not going to work. But I started driving around in the Netherlands, and I was visiting companies and talking to people. And, uh, and what happened is, everywhere I knocked on the door, people said, it's a really good idea, you should do this. And we're going to help you. We're going to support you. In what way we can, but we will try. I, I hear a river dicky there. <laughs> and, and that... All that support that came there, and in, in, in different ways, in helping me a bit, maybe a bit financially, uh, ideas, thinking, I started thinking, maybe it's possible. If you, there's so much support in the market, and there's so much goodwill, it might fly. <coughs> that date, we got the message, you're not going to sell. 
we sat together and said, okay, this is the signal we are going to do it. We are, will try to start a new company. But we had one big problem. No money. How easy it was to find hundreds of millions for buying Access for All, how difficult it was to start a startup company as a new ISP. All the investors we had, they said, no, we don't invest in startups, and if it's below 50 million, it's not in our investment profile. Uh, and the bank said, yeah, it's, yeah, but it's, you only need a couple of millions, but we only do things with so many millions, and then, or is it, that's too risky, or whatever. So, no money, big problem. And, so, and in the meantime, in the end of October, the uh, work council starts a case in court against, the, uh, uh, against KPN to make them listen to their case and their advice. So, plan B, no money. Started, we tried investors, we tried banks, we tried uh, private investors, we tried uh, everything. And so we said, the only thing what we haven't tried and what actually is the best idea, because we are doing this for a good cause, is crowdfunding. So for November, on 14 or 30, we started our crowdfund campaign. And I was bloody nervous. I was shaking. I've never did a, a crowdfund before. So I didn't know what to expect. And we gave ourselves 70 days to 15th of January to raise uh, the minimum amount that was a one and a quarter million of euros. That was the minimum amount. If we didn't reach that, then everybody got its money back. And we said, okay, we tried, we have a nice life. Sorry. Um, 70 days, and the plan was, I would go uh, sit in my car, drive to the uh, whole of the Netherlands, and rent a little uh, bars of cafes and have evenings there where everybody could have like this a, a, a meeting and I would explain what we're going to do and, and what crowdfunding is and what the risks are and there was a whole plan. But what happened? Uh, on 7th of November, on 93rd, we raised two and a half million. What was the max of the crowdfunding campaign? And I can tell you, that evening, when that is, we were sitting together with the whole action group, and our action group, I, I must tell you, is 14 people. And the 14 people is a mix of uh, ex-employees of Access for All and current employees of Access for All. But those you won't see in any picture. <laughs> <coughs> um, we were sitting together at that hour, it was a Thursday evening, and we were sitting there, and uh, we didn't know what to say. You know, we were, we're, and once we were, we were celebrating, because this was like a movie, you know, we, we, we put up a laptop with a, uh, with a web page where the counter was of, the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the amount, and was refreshing every five seconds. This was like a live counter. <laughs> and I went home that evening, I lay in my bed, and I thought, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really fucked. <laughs> There's no way back. Uh, we have lots of money and everybody looking at me. Uh, but I slept okay. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, everything. Everything. But nothing that a, a nice uh, uh, glass of whiskey can handle. <laughs> so, next step 11th of November, we announced Freedom Internet. And we did two things. Uh, uh, we announced our name, Freedom, and we uh, announced uh, uh, the founding membership. And the reason for the founding membership was pretty simple. B by the time we thought of this, uh, that was, uh, we, 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 uh, we already had this plan of the founding membership for s quite some time, because w at the time we didn't even know that we were going to raise so much money with crowdfunding so quickly. And so the idea what I had is that the problem we have is that we have 55,000 people signing a petition. 
But signing a petition is easy. Everybody can sign a petition. It doesn't mean anything, actually. But somebody that's willing to pay 50 euros to put it himself or herself in the front row seat to get a connection to the internet as one of the first and willing to pay for that, that's commitment. That's a customer. That, that could prove that we have the possibility this can really fly. And the idea was, okay, if we can, uh, to the half of January, to have, uh, uh, that was the, pla the, the time frame for the crowd fund, and the same time we said, okay, let's see if we can in the same period, it, we might have 10,000 founding members. Because if we de hit that number, I'm sure we, we will make it. That took seven days. Then we would hit 10,000. So that was, we were, okay, <laughs> we're going to make it. So we, we are making it. So we, now we are going. So now the phase is we are building, we're uh, uh, carving, uh, software is being built, provisioning systems are being built. And we have lots of, we have a wish list of this, and we start with this. <laughs> because we have to start with the basics. To deliver all those uh, uh, services you want for as, a, as, a, as a privacy and security minded company, you have to be able to, to deliver the basics first. You have to deliver just connections about uh, fiber and uh, copper, the DSL. Uh, you have to you start with that. Um, you have to do a television services. I hate television services about uh, uh, IPTV. Huh? <laughs> but I have to. Uh, if, you, if you look at our uh, customer base, we have three kinds of people in our, uh, uh, in our customer base. You have people that... You. You. Technical-minded people, they, they know what they're talking about, is definitely... Uh, the second group of people, that's people that really worry about uh, uh, what are all those corporate companies doing with my data? Why I have to deliver so much data? And what are doing it? Why is being all kinds of profiling, doing marketing campaigns, whatever? Why? And uh, sadly, these people that have this distrust against the large corporations, uh, well, every week in, there's uh, something in the paper, I have, don't have to tell you, that proves them right. So if there is a uh, ISP that thinks the same way, that might be it. And even because we have a very good independency, and we'll come to that later. And the third group is a group of people that say, okay, um, what I want is good service. It might cost a bit more, but I want good service. And if I call, I get a person on the line. And that person is Max. <laughs> <laughs> and that person that knows my, understands my problem and will not stop before my problem is fixed. And there's not a one, a first line, second line, a third line. No, that person can fix my problem on first time. And that people, that group is open. And if you look at that the whole group, about 53%, 53% currently still wants television. <coughs> and if you don't do that, 53% won't come. And it's a large group. It's declining, but still big. Um, so, and uh, calling is the same thing. Um, so where we stand for? <laughs> if Robin only was here to hear that. <laughs> uh, we stand for freedom, free and open internet, and we try to also do the public debates, and we will uh, promote digital civilian rights, and not only for our customers, but for all internet users. And that's a very key point. That, may, that also means that public affairs, somebody who, uh, who really fights for the rights and seeks that public debate, is a key part of the company. That used to be also a part of the uh, philosophy of access for all, but it was killed about five years ago. And there was something going on calling Sleepwet, maybe you still know that. But <laughs> then KPN said, 
Uh, privacy. Uh, combine technical SPs with an ethical view on privacy. And the ethical view means that what you try to do, oh, no, not what you, I said it wrong, what you will do is you think about privacy by design in instead of privacy by compliance. So everything you try to build, things that you will think, okay, can we do better? It, it, the, the, the law is a sort of basic thing you want to do by design. So that's a very important uh, part of your philosophy and which is very different. And I'm talking right now to a lot of third parties where, have, where we have to work that because it's an illusion. You can do everything yourself, so you need third parties. And this is everywhere a struggle, but we'll do it. That means that we always take the difficult route. That also means that sometimes things take longer. And quality. That means that we want uh, uh, not only happy customers, but we also want happy employees. And how happier they are, how better they can also deliver that quality of service. Because we have a social uh, responsibility to do that. And give all your employees a lachas. What's lachas in English? <laughs> Laughing gas? What is this in English? Ah, yeah. I'm not very experienced with the lachas. <laughs> <laughs> So you have some basic things you do anyway. You know, you have to do standard software, open source, as much as possible. There are some things you can't do with open source, but we try so much as possible with open source. You have to do innovation. You have to do good security for your customers, but also for your systems. Open access. For example, I mentioned we, have to, we start with uh, fiber and uh, uh, glass fiber and DSL, but also we want to do the coax, the, the, the coax cable markets, the cable markets. Because as an independent provider, you have that luxury. I'm not owned by a telco. I have the luxury to take all the networks that are out there, if they want. And that's not to me. But very important to how do you secure that you also do this? And that is part of your governance. So what we have is a shareholder. And for that, I will go to one sheet further. And I'll come back here. The legal setup. We have a shareholder that's a stichting, it's an M uh, MPO, and that uh, they have 100% the sh uh, uh, of the share. So we don't have anybody in private owning our company. Freedom Internet is a company which will have has to be a profit-making company. And what the whole point is, is that you you do what you do, you want to do it good and you want to make a good profit. And the profit you use for uh, your, your technical innovations, uh, for your growth and all that. And, but it's, there's no shareholder that says, I want such shareholder value, a return on investment, blah, blah, blah. We don't have that problem. And if we do good, and if there is a surplus of money and there is a div dividend stream to our shareholder, the shareholder will use that money to finance. If you come up with a good idea for a good privacy, security, open source project, you get funding there. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the Stichting Appeltaart, and I don't think I have to explain to you why it's called Appeltaart, do I? No. No, right? You know why? OK. Yeah? Okay. Okay, I, I will look up. Apple tart is uh, apple pie. And apple pie, um, in the old days, if you would get something done of the system engineers of Access Troll, anything you could do, anything you had a special request, send them an apple pie and it's fixed tomorrow. <laughs> that was the idea. <laughs> um, so we have a corporate charter, and the corporate charter defines uh, all those things about privacy, about we have to invest uh, such uh, a certain amount of money into uh, innovation, all those things, and they will check if we already also do that. If it, the company does not do it, I lose my job. Very simple, and somebody else will uh, I will be replaced. Um, so they have control. Over. If there are takeovers, for example, let's say. We want to, uh, Freedom wants to buy a company uh, that 
can only be done by approval of that uh, of apple tart if an investor wants to come in so my I, we don't have it, but let's say in the future, maybe one day, we want an investor in for, I don't know, at the moment I have no clue, but let's say, for argument's sake, um, Apple Tart can say yes or no. And if the investor comes in, that investor can never sell his shares without approval of Apple Tart. So an investor can only come without any say about that. So there's real, real tight controlling there. Uh, we will do a yearly meeting of all members to the clients. We organize, and you can deliver input. What have we done good, and what have we done bad, and what we can we, how can we improve? Because the knowledge is here. Uh, as I said, we have high budgets for technical improvements in public affairs. And uh, if there is always another shareholder, and not even about selling shares, but they can never interfere with technical, with procurement, with uh, public affairs, they cannot interfere with that. You have to stay independent. Good to mention here, we also have a quite a big uh, Raad van Advies, uh, 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 advisory board. Uh, uh, yeah, advisory board. Um, Maybe quickly to go to them, Kirsten Fidel is the uh, person that started the petition and uh, the started the action group. Um, she's very good in public affairs, by the way, and, and making uh, press releases. Uh, Rob Langezaal is, I, I don't know that many people of you know that name, but he's a key figure. The fun part of Rob Langezaal is, by the way, he used to be a board member of KPN a long time ago, and he was responsible for buying Access for All. He did that, and he is very <laughs> angry about this decision by uh, KPN. Mm -hmm. He totally disagrees. Uh, Boris van der Ham used to be um, in parliament for uh, D66, a par uh, political party. Ton van der is the uh, founder, original founder of uh, a company called Telfort. <laughs> and he sold it to? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and there is a guy, Brenner de Winter, total no clue who that guy is. <laughs> this is very weird. Uh, the only thing I know, he comes on Fridays into her office drinking a beer. <laughs> and bringing your beer. Oh, okay, and it takes you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marlene Sticker, she is the uh, uh, um, director of the WAG. Uh, cultural center in uh, Amsterdam, and also one of the founding places of the internet in the Netherlands. <laughs> Who remembers the Digitale Stad? Yes. Yes. I used to have Anko at DDS once yeah. as uh, email. And Frans de Burg, he is at the Burg, he is, owns a company called Kwanza, and they deliver a lot of infrastructure to uh, ISPs, for example. Not to us, by the way. Needless to say that all those people doing this uh, totally on a voluntary basis. <laughs> Selfs Breno. Okay, uh, challenges we have. Time, very short development time. Uh, we, we have a sh short time, time to market. We started in, uh, in uh, uh, 4th of November and we will uh, start connecting customers uh, 30th of March. That's a quite little time to build complete uh, ordering interfaces, uh, provisioning interfaces, you call it on. Um, people, uh, the rights, the right mood, that's in, it's an S too many. Uh, you, to do that, you have to find uh, uh, the right people to build. And yeah, you will have a little time to hire people. And you know, if, if somebody accepts a job with freedom, it, they have to wait a month before they start because you have to quit your old job. And we don't have months, so it's really tight on people. But we have a good team now for to, to know that in November, we had one employee. <laughs> in December, we had three. Now we have 15. So we're growing. <laughs> My biggest technical issue, IPv4. I don't have to explain, uh, I think. 
for some reason, we already knew for 15 years that they would run out and we didn't do anything about it. And that we had the alternative lying in front of us. Ah. <laughs> and then, then, okay, we said, okay, maybe we can do the first IPv6 only provider in the Netherlands. Ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, then maybe we do CG Nut. Uh, yeah. And, then, and I said, if I go to a hacker hotel and I have to say, I'll tell them that we do CG Nut, they're gonna kill me. So, um, problem. Um, we are working on solutions on that. Uh, of course, you can buy them, it's a lot of money, and if we buy a piece, we are run out of money because we, uh, before we uh, start. So we have to be creative. We are trying to uh, solve it. Uh, I think we get there. But if everybody has a slash, slash 16 lying around, call me. You know. <laughs> Future! Uh, of course, we are. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, options, and uh, we start with the basics, and then we start doing VPNs and password managers without storage. So uh, that, that means on-fly generation. Come to that later. Um, we have to define the social topics where we are going to uh, uh, do the public debate about. That's all we're starting that up, and we will start thinking about business services, not only connections of, of companies, but we, we are thinking about co-location, thinking of managed hosting, and all those things we want to do. Um, but all, not tomorrow, but f trying to fast, uh, how fast? Three weeks, eh? Four weeks, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so that means if you are interested here, because I, I know people that are interested, and we want to find out if there's not enough interest. So if you want to find out, for example, you have, have an interest in co-location. He said, can we offer Dutch co-location? Not in an American-owned data center. Is that interesting? Mail to that address and I'll put you on the list. And if you have enough interest of that, then we think, then we're going to do it. Okay. But it's for us important to know if they're net, like the founding members. We need people that say, yes, I want it, and then we can do it. Because uh, we don't have... We have two and a half million, and it sounds like a lot of money, but it is not a lot of money. It's gone with before you blink. So, very important things, and I come to an end because otherwise, uh, uh, yes. 20th of March, we have the launch party in Paradiso. And who, who invested uh, money in our crowdfunding campaign here? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> We have uh, 1,500 people coming. Uh, we, uh, and Paradiso gave us the, uh, the, the, the big uh, hall for free. <laughs> and I, it, it, this, is, this is a commercial promotion, which I wasn't planning. But uh, what we, for example, what are you going to do? We, if you, we, of course, we need to give people uh, uh, a CPU, a CPE, uh, a modem. Yeah. But when you order, you have the cho choice of getting a Fritz box, an AVM, or not. Do your own. Uh, that's what I believe. But if you want one, you get one from us. But AVM said, guys, you're doing this, this is great work. So they sponsored me with 5,000 euros for this event. So that you also know they are paying because they find, think it's a great idea. This is the team. <laughs> and expanding, and uh, this is uh, the people that, if you call us, pick up the phone, uh, people are coding, people are setting up servers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Eating your apple pie. <laughs> we had s uh, quite some already, but we shipped also uh, quite a few already. Because uh, we have uh, this thing called responsible disclosure of our uh, website, and, and uh, we sent out already some T-shirts and some apple pies. I, uh, here's one that I have uh, gratefully 
responded to our responsible disclosure, and thank you for that. So, for now, because I think I already ran out of time, questions? Yes. And I'll, ask, I'll repeat the question. Yes. Uh, I've been a member of Access for All uh, already before it got acquired by KPN. Yeah. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, of course, uh, I get the privacy part. I get the help desk part. I get the carrier free part. Okay. Then shall I repeat my question? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I've been a member of Access for All since uh, before they were acquired by KPN. Uh, so I love this initiative. Um, I get the help desk part, I get the carrier free part, I also get uh, the privacy part. But one thing that worries me, it's skill. Um, at the opening talk of the CCC, uh, skill really matters in cybersecurity. Where, where's the... Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to talk like this. Uh, in cybersecurity, uh, skill matters. Yeah. If you're a large provider, you get a huge hook, you get a huge knock, you get all the threat intel, you know yeah. where the threat is coming from. So if I go to a small provider, how do you deal with this problem? How do you get your threat intel, all your network scanning up to date to compare with... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I get a question, uh, and it's a good question. Yeah, to compete with the large um, it's a good question. Um, yeah. One thing we did of our doing, uh, we were not finished at that, is that we, the people we hired are not uh, uh, youngsters. Yeah, they're all my age. That worries me too. Not, not all. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, not all. But that what, but, but means that the people we now uh, 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 put on the payroll, they... Um, been in this business for quite some time. They know what's going coming for them. Uh, so that means that for a startup company, we relatively spend a lot on wages because they're they not the cheapest people. And that we do that because we first want to have the right people with the right quality, with the right skill set to uh, counter these issues. Um, your, your, your uh, worries are mine too. And um, there are parts in the story I haven't told you yet. Um, because um, we're working also <coughs> with a skilled uh, group of people uh, which will join our company also later. And I cannot tell you a lot about it yet, but that will be an announcement. They will come. Uh, it's not a satisfying answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah. They'll come. <laughs> Any other questions? That's, yep. The main ISP in your uh, area. Yeah, the main ISP in your sort of marketplace in the United Kingdom is deeply problematic in many ways. When are you going to bring your offering across the North Sea? <laughs> I'm not sure how problematic with Brexit that would be, but... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> the, the, these thoughts are... are uh, came to us not only from, from the, U to the UK, but other countries as well, because it seems that the, 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 this, this mindset of doing an enterprise provider is not very common. Um, so we have to start here. Uh, yeah, we have to build a footprint. And to honestly, that will take us at least three years to get a f f good uh, a position here. Um, <laughs> Kuhn always says that it can also can be done in one week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <you're wrong>. uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, th th we are thinking about it, but we have currently totally no plan for it. Because we had a, a request from Belgium, uh, we had this same thing, uh, uh, somebody from France approached me, UK. It might be a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. Other people. 
can't see through the lights. No? Okay. Well, thank you uh, for uh, your time. I hope uh, I gave a little insight about what happened uh, last uh, uh, 13 months and how we came to this. And we hope that the coming years will be a uh, great success and fun to work also with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Anko. As you are not staying, <laughs> as you are not staying uh, all weekend in the hotel, I would like to give you, uh, of course, this nice book ah, thank you. from our community to you. And I hope to see you next year in a uh, appeltaart bungalow. I hope so. <laughs> thank you so much.